And I will say, I have never had more fun in my entire banking career as I'm having right now. And part of it is working for Happy State Bank and, and uh, laughing and having fun, but also being able to put together an organization that represents the values that I hold, hold dear to me. And that is family first, community, and, and my job. And uh, the folks that we've associated with at the bank all feel the same way. Welcome everyone to LoneStarVarsity.com. I am Zach Long with George Watson from AJ Media and this is the Happy State Bank Football Fever, our weekly look at high school football across the South Plains. And George Watson, I don't know about you, but the summer felt like it went extremely fast and we're ready to kick off high school football on Thursday night in Lubbock. Yeah, Zach, the, su the summer went really fast. Just seemed like a couple weeks ago, Cooper was in the state baseball tournament and now all of a sudden everybody's getting ready for football. I don't know where the summer went this, this year. It, it went by really fast, but like you said, now everybody's ready for football. Football. We're ready for football. Let's get this thing kicked off. And speaking of getting it kicked off, we're not going to play around right off the bat. We've been running a top 25 of the South Plains over the last couple weeks. If you haven't seen those, go to LoneStarVarsity.com to get caught up on that stuff. But right now, I want to take an in-depth look at our good friend, the top five. And George, let's get it started with number five a traditional powerhouse on the South Plains, the Littlefield Wildcats. Yeah, Littlefield and Coach Brian Huseman always do a great job out there, and they've got another talented group this year, led by maybe the, the best uh, running back trio on the South Plains with Cruz Lovato, uh, Demodric Moore, and Devontae Mathis. Those three are going to cause havoc for anybody in that uh, slot T offense that they run out there. They've got to replace a quarterback. They've got a few holes here and there, but overall I think probably the number five team out there in the South Plains just because of what they do and how they do it and how well they do it. And speaking of running backs, our number four team on the countdown, they've got one too, the Shallow Water Mustangs. Yeah, you and I have been, have been privileged enough in this, in this preseason to spend a little time with Jarek Black, getting to know him, talking to him, and, and just what a quality kid he is, and, and how much Shallow Water is going to lean on him. They've got some other guys, though. They've got Cameron Knight at tied in, who's a Division I recruit. He's, a, he's committed to Texas State. they got a key move in, and Wes McCutcheon, the, play, uh, the uh, Plainview quarterback, moved in over the summer. So that may help their uh, passing game as well. And then they play a solid defense out there. So, yeah, look for Shallow Water. They went three Three rounds deep last year. Look for them to uh, to go uh, at least that deep again. And let's stay right in that uber tough 3A district. Go right across the road a little bit in Lubbock. The Estacado Matadors checking in at number three. Yeah, one of the advantages of, of uh, having to go through so many injuries the year before is you get a lot of those kids back. You know, the next year, and that's where Estacado is right now. Obviously, the the key guy they're getting back, Robert Johnson, who has had an outstanding sophomore year, rushed for over 2,200 yards. 30 touchdowns, uh, tore up his knee in practice week four of the season. He's back, looks like he's healthy. And, you know, they've got a lot of guys around him. Jalen Tennyson, a quarterback, is back, uh, just a junior this year. Uh, Tamori Terry at fullback, rushed for almost 1,000 yards uh, in place of Johnson last year. Plus, they've got an experienced offensive line led by Ryan Salinas, experienced defensive line led by Aaron Young, and some really good guys in the secondary. So overall, I like their talent, their experience, and their depth at number three. And let's jump over to our powerful 4A district in the city of Lubbock and start with perhaps one of the best coaching jobs over yeah. the last two, three years in Coach Pearson and the Monterey Plainsman. Yeah, you said it, Zach. Uh, from, from what uh, they came from you know, just a few years ago to what they've been built now, Coach Pearson, definitely one of the best coaches here on the South Plains, has Monterey back to where, uh, you know, where they used to be back in the mid-2000s, making deep playoff runs, competing for district championships. I think they'll be there again this year. You know, they, they stumbled a little bit at the beginning of the district last year, but came on strong, won like their last five of their last six games. I look for them to have a real strong season all the way through. They're going to be competitive with everybody. A uh, strong running game with Trayvon Benton and, and Vincent Johnson and a good defense. I think Monterey will be right there at, at the end of the season vying for a district championship. And at number one, a team that at the end of last season, I don't think either of us would have put at number one, but oh, how things can change quickly <laughs> yeah. in the land of the Friendship Tigers. Yeah, you, you mentioned how things can change. You know, they lose to Modric Tucker, which was basically two-thirds of their offense. They leaned on him so heavily last year because they were just inconsistent throwing the football. Well, now 
they may be the most balanced team out there this year because of a couple of move-ins, one of them being uh, Trevor Uhlenbach, a left-handed quarterback out of Artesia who threw for almost 2,900 yards and about 29 touchdowns last year. I saw him at the scrimmage against Cooper, and I walked away. I thought I saw the next uh, Tyler Lyons, the way he moved, the way he could throw the ball on the move, the decision-making he made. But they've also got a couple of good running backs. Uh, Grant Sandercox is, is a junior that has some really good speed, and Ronald Awad, a sophomore, who may be the next stud running back to come out of friendship. Plus, as we know, the Tigers always can play defense. They play very aggressive defense, and they're going to have strong linebackers, strong up front as well, and some experience in the secondary. Just as an overall team, I like them as the top team on the South Plains. You know, funny how things change so quickly. A little gift basket from the state of New Mexico. <laughs> exactly. And now we're actually discussing that this friendship team could be better than the one they had last year. And, and could be better, you know, better than the one that went, uh, you know, when I mentioned Tyler Lyons, that team ended up in the state semifinals against Hebron. And if not for a fumble late in the game, could, you know, really could have beaten Hebron and played for a state championship. This team reminds me a lot of that team just because of all the pieces they have and, and the quarterback they have this year. They're going to be a lot more balanced going into this year. George, obviously a lot of talent in in this top five teams, but we're going to go back to someone we mentioned earlier in Shallow Waters, Jarek Black. This kid is under the limelight. He is a Division One recruit, and there's a lot of ways you can go about life when that spotlight is firmly planted on you. This guy is a stark contrast to most high school kids you see under that spotlight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, we see a lot of kids that, that take that spotlight and, and they then they thrive in it, but they get a little braggadocious in it as well. Jarek Black is not that uh, not that kind of kid. He's very humble, very honest with you, and, and really has his head on straight. You and I have spent some time with him. We've been able to talk with him and see just how good a kid not only he is off the field but on the field as well um, physically I feel fit the best I've ever felt really um, stronger a little bit faster and I guess I could say a little bit more elusive and then I guess mentally I'm a little bit more mentally prepared to be a better leader on this team and help make good sh the strides that our team's gonna make this year um, obviously it's just like another every other day like every teenager you know I have a girlfriend I hang out with my friends. School's coming up. I mean, school con consumes 90% of the time once the summer's over with. But you know, it's just like every teenage kid. Um, honestly, it goes, I go, I mean, God, honestly, is number one. Then my family, um, school, then my friends. You know, those are the four main things that I, in that order, that are important to me in my life. Recruiting. I've heard some stories that you're pretty quiet about stuff. Uh, am I pretty accurate in saying that? Yes, sir, you are. Just because, you know, I like to keep it between me and my family. Just because, you know, the decision I make affects not only myself, but my family. Just the decision of either going far off or staying close to home. I mean, and then it affects my future is what I'm going to get a degree in, what I'm going to, my job that I'll try and get when I'm out of college I mean so yeah I'm pretty quiet about it um, I'm just looking at it as it's been a fun experience you know looking at fun you know of course I'm quiet about it but I mean it's honestly a fun experience and I it doesn't have to be ton of flash and stuff like that I mean but just getting to go to the camps getting to talk to the coaches getting the letters getting the phone calls you know I think it's just a fun experience all around and I mean you got to enjoy it while it lasts Honestly, we want to leave a state championship because, I mean, we, we were capable of doing it last year and I think we're capable of doing it this year. And it's just, you know, it goes back to the little pressure that you have as a senior, you know. We want to leave this school with something, some memory of us. And, you know, I think we can leave it with the state championship. And, I mean, if that's, I think that's what we're going to do. Obviously, Shia Water probably going to be very proud of that young man before it's all said and done, George. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a great young man, a great head on his shoulders, and, and really looking forward to the kind of senior year that he can have this year. And speaking of this year, let's get down to the nitty-gritty of it. <laughs> it's time to make picks where we usually make people mad, and uh, George gets to put his knowledge on the line. Well, I'm, I'm good at making people mad. All right, well, then yeah. I'm going to give you a chance to do it right yeah. now. All right, let's look at some games of week number one. Let's start in the city of Lubbock. Canyon visits. Coach Strunk and Lubbock High. Yeah, uh, you know, talking with Coach Strunk this season, and you know how how much they're looking forward to this season. They're looking at doing a lot of great things in the non-district as well as the district. I, I, this one I don't know about right now, just because you and I saw Canyon against Coronado and how much they were able to run the football. 
and you know I was able to see Monahan's and their football team against Lubbock High. Right now, I'm going to kind of have to lean against lean to Canyon on this one, but it wouldn't surprise me if Lubbock High wins this one because I know they felt like they gave this one away. Right now, though, I think Canyon just has a little bit too much for them. And as we mentioned earlier, Estacado and Robert Johnson, they open the year at Hereford against the Herd. Yeah, this is going to be one of those interesting inner class matchups, 3A versus 2A. It was a pretty good game in Lubbock last year, and, and, and uh, Estacado gave Hereford everything they wanted. I think it's going to be an even better game this year down or up in Hereford. And I think, you know, the fact that Johnson is back, they have a lot more weapons back and a lot of experience back. I think Estacado goes up to Hereford and takes one from the Herd. And usually one of our favorite games of the year on the early slate, Shallow Water at Muleshoe. Yeah, this one's going to be interesting from the fact that Muleshoe is basically having to start all over again. They had two guys coming back from last year. One of them is, is receiver defensive back Austin Ross. So they're, they're going to lean on a lot of experienced guys. And the last thing they needed to do to open the season is go up against Jerry Black in that offense. So, I, you know, with the way Shallow Water beat them last year, I don't see how it's going to be any different this year. I think Shallow Water probably runs in, in a runaway this year. And the next game may be one of the last times we see it for a little bit if realignment plays yeah. out in some ways. Cooper at Idaloo. Yeah, interesting uh, interesting aspect here, Zach, is that you've got this game with two new head coaches, Max Catwinkle at Cooper taking over after John Wendell became the full-time AD. Jeff Lofton, the son of legendary coach Johnny Taylor, takes over uh, you know, a, a system that he played in, a school that he played at. So two very interesting dynamics here. It's just going to be see whose system is, been, is, is further ahead than the others, I think, because I Idaloo, you know, it just runs the same system and everybody's used to it. Uh, and, and the fact that it's at home, I, I'm going to go with the Wildcats on this one. And next up, my early season favorite for most badass helmet on the South Plains <laughs> belongs to the Roosevelt Eagles. Yes. They visit Leveland in week one. Yeah, Roosevelt uh, going a little bit of the Oregon Ducks with the big wings on, on, the, hel on the maroon helmets. So I, ho I hope that allows them to take flight because they're going to need it against a strong Leveland team. This is, a, this is a game that's probably pretty even in, in a lot of aspects. Uh, you know, it depends on how quickly Roosevelt can get its offense going and, and how well Leveland can play defense. You know, as, as even as this game is, it's hard to pick, so I want to go with Level Land being at home and being the larger team. And up next, the battle for the heart of John Deere Green, Spring Lake <laughs> Earth at New Deal. Yeah, two teams that uh, you know, you know, if, if you can't see this team, this, see this game without lights, then, you then, you're not, then you're not looking. Yeah, both of them wearing the green and gold. Uh, you know, Spring Lake Earth is going to be a good football team. They've got a new coach, and John David Caffey took over for his dad Stan, who went down to winners. So they're going to be a lot of the same. But you know, you're talking about a New Deal squad that I think is just absolutely loaded from from front to back. They got their entire starting offensive line back. They've got a lot of their defensive back and they've got four of the best running back groups in uh, running backs as a group in, on the South Plains. Being in New Deal, I know they're really focused this year. I'm going to go with the Lions in this one. Floyd Data at a very intriguing Brownfield squad. Yeah, you, you mentioned intriguing Brownfield squad. This is a group that uh, you know last year uh, was 4-1 and one in district after they struggled in non-district. And they've got one of the better athletes on the South Plains, Jacoby Hill, their outstanding quarterback, listed as top of, one of the top 100 uh, juniors in the state by Dave Campbell's Texas football. Floyd Data, I know, is, is, is really focused and, and they're looking for a good season and they've got a few pieces there that if they can stay healthy, they're going to be competitive in their district. I just don't know if they'll be able to contain Hill and, and some of the weapons he has with Brownfield. I'm going to go with the Cubs. And our next matchup, if you're a disturbed individual like me, you can't help but be excited about the possibility of a Jackrabbit and a Hornet duking it out. How about suit in and Rawls? Yeah, it's not exactly a Jackalope out there, but, no. but it's getting pretty close. Uh, two teams that I think are pretty even this year, Sudan has lost a couple of players. One of them to you know Dayton Fisher to the uh, to the college ranks, but you know they've got some solid uh, kids coming back. Rawls also has some some really good kids coming back, led by Caleb Reese, their outstanding running uh, running back and defensive back. I think this is one is pretty even between two pretty even teams. So go with the home team, go with the Jackrabbits from Rawls. And our last matchup featuring a big time player for Tahoka, they visit Crosbyton. Yeah, you mentioned it. Ray Palmer, an outstanding linebacker for Tahoka, getting some Division One looks, uh, you know, and, and has over 200 tackles each of the last two years. But they got to go to a Crosbyton team that runs the ball really well. They've got some of their key people back on offense. I think Crosbyton probably takes this one thanks to their running game and, and their ability to control the clock that way. 
So there are your appetizers. Let's go to the main dish. Our game of the week, the Crosstown Rivalry, Coronado versus Monterey. Yeah, not a better way to open the new Plains Capital Park Larry Field and, and debut those renovations than getting uh, the big rivalry in the city, Coronado Monterey. Uh, should be another outstanding game. I know Coronado's looking to take some leaps. Monterey's looking to, uh, you know, take it to another level as well. So it should be a good game for both of them to get started with. And last week we had some time to go over and visit both teams' practices, visit with both head coaches on the eve of this big game. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we feel like we've got good leadership and we've seen some really good things in the last three weeks, and it's just a matter now of putting it on the field when the lights come on, and I can't think of a better way to get that going than to turn the lights on with our friends across town because it all it get a lot of people stirred up. It'll be a lot of fun next Thursday night. You know, we've uh, uh, made a lot of uh, strides in the first uh, couple of weeks here and getting ready with our first scrimmage and getting ready for the first game. But we're we're uh, we're going to need some more time, and we've got a short week, so we're going to hope that uh, Coronado's in the same boat that we are and, and uh, uh, go into a game kind of all in the same uh, uh, area as far as skill-wise and scheme-wise. So we're, we're looking at doing some things this week that are going to get us ready, but we're going to have to make sure that uh, we get the right guys on the field earlier or it's going to be a struggle. You don't have to worry about that. It's just get the you know get the game plan uh, together because the rest of that stuff will take care of itself. You know the thing that adds so much to it is it's the first week of school and you got to go through all those first day procedures, first week procedures, and get used to all that. And you you uh, pile all that on top of a Thursday night game. It makes for a pretty short week, but uh, we're excited. I know the kids will be ready to go. It should be a special night Thursday night at Plains Capital. You know, of course, uh, we've preached this, and I know you hear this, and it's just an old canned uh, adage that, you know, we're not really worried about our opponent. We're more worried about the Monterey Plainsmen right now and getting ready for a game. So there's all the build-up, George. Now it's your turn. Yeah, my Thanks. turn. I, I, I get to anger half the city of Lubbock with this one. It makes uh, it fun. It's going to yeah, be exactly. so fun. Exactly. Um, you know, you and I were both privileged to go out and watch some Coronado scrimmage uh, this last week, watch some of Monterey scrimmage as well. You know, th there's some interesting dynamics here. Uh, you know, Coronado struggles stopping Canyon's running game. Monterey struggles stopping, uh, you know, Paladuro's athleticism. You know, Coronado's going to bring athleticism on its offense. Monterey's going to bring a power running game with its offense. So it's going to be which defense can step up and make enough plays. I just don't see where Coronado will be able to do that as much as Monterey. I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a high scoring game. I'm looking, you know, something like a 35 28. But in the end, I think Monterey takes this one. A lot of intrigue during week zero. Yeah. I hate calling it that. It's week <laughs> one. A lot of intrigue during week zero of high school football. And if you need to get caught up on any information, George, hold them up here for them. Yep. Our high school football fever tab came out last week. It is available all over the place. So if you want to get some information, go grab that. And if you don't want to grab one, there is a nice digital version at LoneStarVarsity.com including all kinds of good pages, team information, anything you might want to know about your respective school. We'll be out and about this week covering a handful yep. of games, George. And like always, you know where to stay locked into LoneStarVarsity.com and LubbockOnline.com for full coverage of high school football. Yep. So, sir, there's our maiden voyage on the Happy State Bank football fever. Not a bad day. Not a bad day. Looking forward to the rest of the year, too. We are all looking forward yep. to it, and we will see you next time right here on the Happy State Bank football fever. Thank you.